Hi everyone, it's uh, Glenn here. I hope you're all keeping well and thank you very much for coming to the channel. On my last video, uh, it was about an image I'd taken with this scope with two other astrophotographers, the Flying Bat and Squid Nebula. We managed to get 93 hours of data and we got a really lovely target. And if you've not seen it, please look through my videos. It's the last video I released and check it out because it is quite a stunning image. This uh, setup has been great for me and I recently rejigged everything and the last video goes into those details. And in that I mentioned that I've got a mini PC, the Quieter 2 mini PC here. And uh, this has actually been a really excellent piece of kit and I wanted to go into more details about it. So today's video is gonna be what software I've got on there, how I run it and how it works for me and why I went down that route. So I hope you find that of interest, especially if you're looking to do something similar. Right, let's show you what I've done. My name's Glenn and you're watching Astro Bloke. So first up, this is the Mealy Quieter 2 PC. Uh, it's just literally held on here with a Velcro pad so it can be removed. And you've got your on off switch on this side and you've got three USB 3 outputs on the bottom. Um, one of them's going to the Pegasus power box for control. One goes to the camera and the other one goes down to the my mini router, which is down here. And this is the um, a Belkin mini router and I use this for when I'm out in the field it gives off its own hotspot and I can connect to that and then I can run the rig remotely uh, from a laptop or my iPad in the field. So here's the other side of the uh, Quieter 2 and you can see here uh, you've got a third USB 3 slot that you can be using. I sometimes put um, memory stick in there and take some data off uh, but most of the time when I'm at home this is what you get when you live near an airport. And what I do at home is I actually download over the Wi-Fi, but if I'm out in the field and I want to take the data off of the PC to maybe put it on my laptop or something, I'll put a USB stick in there. You've got two HDMI outputs, so if you wanted to add screens, you could, and I'll be using them in a minute to show you how what's inside the PC. It's powered with a USB-C adapter. Now I'm not actually overly happy with the adapter I've got here, which I initially bought. It makes it stick out here. It's a, that's from the Pegasus Powerbox, it's a 5.1 to 2.5 uh, adapter. Goes in there and then that, but as you can see, it's quite, sticks out and it's quite wobbly, not great. So I've found online some angled ones of these. I'll show you that now and uh, I think they're going to be a much better fix. They're coming in the next day or two, so hopefully they'll arrive soon, and then that's going to allow me to run the wire straight down. It's not going to be sticking out so far, so less chance of catching it. One of the things I really wanted to do when I was out in the field was force the um, uh, connection to the hotspot of the uh, Wi-Fi router here, so I've connected that via the LAN cable onto the uh, mini PC and that, 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 that works really well. And then that also still leaves the Wi-Fi that's inside the router, um, the PC itself, so that can connect to a hotspot on your phone, say, and that means then you can still connect to the internet and get resources. But then you can remote connect through remote desktop and control the rig with no issues with internet. You don't have to have an internet or phone connection or anything, and that works exceptionally well. Right, let's jump indoors and uh, have a look inside this PC and uh, see what we've got going on. Okay, so before I connect the PC up and show you what's inside, I wanted to just show you it in my hand so you can see how small it is. It's not heavy at all. Um, it's a nice compact unit, it's fanless, so there's not air vents all over it, which I think is an advantage with astrophotography because it's outside with all the dew. I think moisture is going to find it a lot harder to get inside this and cause any problems. 
I've not had any issues at all with it in operation. This does get quite warm at the top because it uses this uh, case as a heat sink. So the only thing I would say is when you're out and uh, putting this on your rig, don't start mounting things on top because you're going to stop the ability for it to uh, keep cool and you could cause it to overheat. Um, I did originally have a power box sitting on top. It didn't actually overheat, but I did notice it was getting quite warm. So um, I uh, decided to keep it open because this is the actual heat sink for cooling it down. It's got really good specs. It's quite powerful and, and literally has no problems whatsoever running Nina and all the other programs I need. Um, and I think now if you were to go on Amazon, I think these are still available, but they've now upgraded it and they now do the Mealy Quieter 3 PC. Um, and I, I assume that that would be just as good. So um, I'm going to now plug this in, going to get a keyboard and mouse connected to it. I'm going to have a look inside. Okay, so I've plugged the Mealy PC. I've got a, a mouse and a keyboard, power, and I've got a USB cable there. Just going to lift you up. It's, uh, so you can see me and it's all on the screen here and we're just gonna quickly log into it and it's gonna pop up on the screen and this is when I initially set this up I was connected through this to the screen um, and the only thing I've got to do now is actually plug um, my ethernet cable into this because I've forgotten to do that so give me a second once you're into your PC, you need to download what you're going to use to control the mount cameras and other equipment you've got on your rig. Uh, I choose Nina, which uh, is my favoured uh, way of controlling things. I really like the program. It's free and it's always being developed. I used to use Astrophotography Tool, which again was a great system, um, but I moved over to Nina and um, for, for reasons because at the time Astrophotography at all didn't have a focus routine. Nina was a little bit more advanced at the time. I moved on to that and since moving to that, I, I, that's the one I like to use. Um, there are others, you've got Sequence Generator Pro. Um, the only reason why I don't use that is because it uh, comes at a cost and Nina is free. Um, and. Uh, yeah, we spend a lot of money on this uh, hobby, so it's best to keep the prices down, I think. But um, I find Nina's very comprehensive, and I use it in my observatory. It controls the roof, it controls everything, so I find it really good. Once you download Nina, it comes with most of the drivers for most gear. So you'll find that um, you won't have too many problems, but you will need to go on to the, um, if I type into here, ASCOM, uh, which is standards for astronomy and over on on the page you'll find a platform and you download that and that will hold on to all the drivers that you need to operate your gear now when I download Nina most of the drivers are in place um, and if you're having difficulty with something connecting the best thing to do is to actually go to the website of the product you've got so if it's a ZWO camera go to ZWO and in their support pages there will be drivers so if I say put in here ZWO because I did have to do this for my 2600 and just type in ZWO 2600 drivers it's got here software and drivers for the ZWO ASI so I'm just going to click on that and we'll have a look at what comes up And as you can see, you've got a download here and it's got, just telling me they're out of the office, native drivers for the ZWO cameras. So you would download that, and that would just sit inside on that ASCOM platform. And then when you go to put your camera in, it should automatically detect it, it'll be in a download list. And that's basically how you get to control everything. Um, and as I say, if you have any issues with any pieces of equipment not connecting, go to the relevant website and the drivers will be there for you. Just make sure you download the driver. You don't need to put it anywhere, it just needs to be on the PC and it will pick it up and it will go from there. 
Now, additional things that I've got on here is I've got a Pegasus Power Box um, program for controlling the Pegasus Power Box. And I've also got on my rig um, an Ioptron iPolar. So again, I've got the iPolar um, program on the, on, the, on the computer so that I can connect to that and Polar Align. Now, one of the things that um, a lot of people ask me, um, and someone's been talking to me recently, is how I get to connect to the mini PC. And I showed earlier that it's connected through an ethernet cable to um, a little hotspot uh, router. So through, through that, I will use Windows Remote Desktop, and there is an app for um, iOS as well, so I can use my iPhone or my iPad, or you can use an Android device, or you can use a laptop or a PC, and you can remote desktop in if you're at home and you're connected through your network, or you're connected to the hotspot that's given off by the actual little mini router that I've got, I can remote desktop into that and I can control the PC from there. So what I tend to do is uh, at the start of a night, I'll remote desktop in through my iPad so that I've got something small with me and I can do my polar alignment. And then when I wanna go on to do, uh, you know, set up my Nina and do my imaging, I'll normally switch to either a laptop or I'll come in here to my main PC and control it from indoors. If I'm away from home, you can't use remote desktop. Uh, apparently you can use it, but you need to set up things like port forwarding, which is um, not complicated, but for me, I, I just couldn't be bothered to muck about with all of the settings. So I just use a different system. So what I do is I use Google Remote Desktop. And again, that's a free program. You just download it, go on to Google, just put in Google Remote Desktop and it will come up with a program. All you have then is a PIN number to uh, link your device to your mini PC. And again, you've got full control, but you can do that. If, so if you're away from home and you've got a phone signal or a Wi-Fi signal somewhere else, you can literally just remote in and start up. So sometimes I might be away from home. I know it's not gonna rain. I've got my rig set up in the garden in the afternoon, I go off, I might be at work, say in the evening or something, and later on, yeah, it's clear, I can remote in and I can say, right, bosh, get playing, and uh, start 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 an image uh, routine off, and um, I normally set everything up beforehand so it's ready to go, and uh, that's another good thing you can do. So there's a couple of extra programs on here that I've downloaded to run my rig. One is Astap, which is um, a plate solver, which works really well through Nina. Just search in Google for Astap and it will download that. And uh, that's a really good plate solver, so works really well. And I've also got EQ Mod, and that's the thing that um, helps me control the mount and does things like recording, pet curves, etc. Now it's quite an old program and um, I've been using it actually from, from the beginning and it's never really let me down. It's actually been really good. But a couple of people um, I've recently spoken to and that I know use um, Green Swamp Server, GSS. So I'm actually going to just call that up actually. Let's have a look at that. Green Swamp Server. And they've actually highly recommended this to me. Um, there it is, Green Swamp Server. And it's a little bit more up to date than EQMod. Now, EQMod's not been updated for a long time. And I must say, I've looked, had a little look at it on, online, and uh, the interface looks really good. Uh, it does everything that EQMod does, but it looks a little bit more modern and it is something that's still being developed. So I'm actually thinking of giving this a try and downloading it onto my mini PC and seeing how it works. Um, so what I'm hopefully gonna do is download that, 
get it working, and then I'll report back to you what my findings are. Okay, so I'm on my main PC now, and I wanted to show you how I connect to the mini PC. So the main uh, way I do it when I'm at home is I'll use Windows Remote Desktop. Um, and if I just go to settings on here, put in remote, oh, it's already there because I've used it before. You just need to obviously tell it I, I've got OBSI and mobile uh, connections so I can switch between one or the other. And we're now into the mini PC and we have full control as if we're connected directly either like with a laptop or we was on a screen on the mini PC. Let me just tidy this uh, desktop up. So this would be my preferred way of connecting and you've got full control of everything. So I can call up Nina, I can call up whichever programs I want, and then I can operate it and get an imaging session up and running. Now you might get a slight lag, uh, depending on your internet connection or how good everything is. I'm quite lucky here, I've got very good connection, and so I don't really get any lag at all. And um, as I say, you've got full control uh, as if you're literally just directly connected to the PC. I mean, you are connected directly just via Wi-Fi. So that's the remote desktop connection. Um, what I'm gonna do now is switch over and show you what the connection is like through Google Desktop, so if you was away from home. So back in the PC, we call up Google, and you can see that I've got Starbox and Mini PC. Starbox is actually my OBSI, mini PC is the mobile PC that we're talking about so if I click on that um, and also it shows all the PCs that you've got on the system and then what it will do is it will go through and connect and then I save the pin number so that I don't have to put it in every time you can leave it so you have to type it in this is the pin just to log into the actual uh, computer itself um, if there's also a six digit PIN for the Google Remote Desktop. So I hadn't changed anything from earlier when I had it all running and we've just literally connected in through the other system. And this is great because this one can be used when you're away from home, even just on your uh, mobile phone. So I use my iPhone, um, as I say, Google Remote Desktop and Windows Remote Desktop both have apps for iOS. So I can use my iPad or my iPhone away from home as long as I've got a signal and I can control my rig from there. And also if you've got Wi-Fi, of course you can control it as well. So this works really well and gives me complete control of my rig when I'm away from home. Okay, so just to summarize uh, really why I went down the mini PC route. And uh, I did consider buying an ASI Air um, as a quite a few few of my friends use these and they are excellent pieces of kit and um, I had a good think about it the, one of the main reasons why I didn't choose that route is because with that ASI Air you can only use ZWO products um, in the past I've had Altair Astro cameras and I do like to have that flexibility that if I've got something different say like the Pegasus Astro Powerbox which has an auto due function on the advance I want to be able to control that and you can't do that through the ASI Air. With um, the Mini PC you've got more flexibility with the programs you use so I really do uh, like Nina that's my preferred um, program for acquisition um, I'm really comfortable with it I know it really well and it does things that the ASI Air can't so I obviously shoot a lot of mono and that allows me to put in things like filter offsets which uh, means things are much quicker when we're changing filters I haven't got to keep doing autofocus routines <clears throat> the ASI Air won't do that so that's the reason why I went down the mini PC route on the cost side there's not a lot between them. Uh, my mini PC was actually cheaper than an ASI Air, but by the time you've added on, say, a Pegasus power box to give you the USB outs that you might need for everything, um, even if you went for a cheaper one like Deep Sky Dad uh, uh, Hub 
or even just a powered hub, you're still looking at roughly about the same kind of money. So um, cost isn't really something that, uh, that, that bared a factor in my decision making. It was purely to do with software and that flexibility. Also, I've really enjoyed the project of actually getting a mini PC and getting it all up and running and having it exactly tailored to how I want it to work. So if when you've looked at this video, there's some gaps in information, something I've not explained enough, or there's something you'd like to know that you think I know the answer to, please reach out, put a comment in the comment section below. I'll be more than happy to come back to you and uh, try and help you where I can. I hope I've covered enough, but it really isn't difficult to set up. It's, it's quite straightforward and it does work really, really well. I know that um, having my auto, uh, my um, mobile rig automated, I can sit in my, say my camper van or indoors or whatever and operate it in comfort makes a massive difference. So um, I hope if you go down that route, you get that luxury too. So um, right, that is all I have to say on the matter. Thank you ever so much for coming back to the channel and supporting me. It really is appreciated. And until next time, please take care and wish you all clear skies.